Zach Sagan the Gang hanging out right now in the studio. Two of uh one of the stars, one of the creators and writers of You Do You. Prom, prom, prom. A BuzzFeed Violet series. Mm-hmm. Also like Jill's best friends. Yep. I, I'm getting that vibe <laughs> here that like Gal Pals. B- besides the fact that No, we, yeah, we're platonic. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany Ashley, Ashley Perez here in the studio. Jill has staph infection. Cool, yeah. Let's bring that up in the interview right away. <laughs> let's start with that one. We don't know Very which topical. buttons Jill has touched. I think it's important. She's rubbed her chin on all of them, mm-hmm. you know? So why don't we, uh, like, can we get the elephant out of the room first? Can we start with the fact that you and Brittany are dating? Yeah, we are dating, and she shouldn't kiss me right now because I have staph infection <laughs> on my face. I woke up with it. Wash your sheets. Wow. I mean, That's a different version of I woke up like this. <laughs> yeah, I say woke up flawless and Joe's like, I get my chin zoozy. <laughs> Is that concerning to you, Brittany, when your girlfriend calls you or sends you a text and says, I have staph infection all over my chin? Yeah, because, <laughs> you know, yesterday we went to dinner and she was like putting her face on me and stuff. So. Yeah. Oh, That's what cool. happens at most dinners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Every dinner I go to, my face is on someone. You know, at least one person. <laughs> one to three people. It was a lot of like <laughs> snuggling with our faces. Oh, so that- rubbing my face. Yeah, yeah, so that's a little concerning. Cool. Well, I think this oh. interview's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been great. Bye, y'all. <laughs> okay, you do you. It's a, a BuzzFeed Violet series. It's mm-hmm. really the first of its kind, yeah? It is. Correct. So, okay, I was watching with Jill today. Walk me through it. You don't know what it is. What is it, really? Um, BuzzFeed Violet was something that we created a year ago, and Brittany, is, we've been friends for a while, and she came in as a writer on BuzzFeed, yeah. and she, we basically wanted to take the character universe we created and make it into a full narrative arc, and there was only one person to do that, and that was Brittany Ashley. Wow. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That was beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so, nice. do you want to talk about what actually you do you is and like runtime and all that? Like, I feel like BuzzFeed Violet is the kind of character universe that all these characters were pulled from, and then it was made into something that feels a little bit more like a series or a movie, a little mini movie. Yeah, and it flows beautifully, by the way. And oh, thank it you. So looks much. great. Yeah. Seriously, yeah. it's really Jared phenomenal. Sosa. Jared Sosa, director. The director, and yeah, he made it look really good. Tell us about your art, dude. Yeah, I wanna, <laughs> tell me about the story. I mean, where does it come from? Whose life is it based on? Is it based off of your life, Brittany, or is it based off of your life, Ashley? Because well, we're the same person, Brittany Ashley Perez. <laughs> 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 Mad we didn't. I wanted to marry Brittany at one point so that my name would be Ashley Perez Ashley. But wow. it sucks. Yeah. Hey, maybe Bad. next time. Well, know? I don't have I'm staph infection, her. so <laughs> <laughs> you're not you're not as desirable without the staff, okay? <laughs> no, Brittany, Brittany only, Brittany only dates in... people with staff. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ashley. L- whose life is it based on? Is it coming from your life? Is it a combination of things? Because mm-hmm. I eventually I want to get into the whole BuzzFeed culture and how oh, you yeah. ended up here. But let's start with you do you. Because it, I feel like I'm when I'm watching it, I'm I'm watching either like really highly produced Snapchat my stories of my best friends' lives. Mm. Because it's oh. that relatable to me, mm-hmm. and I see it firsthand, you know? I love that. So uh, is it coming from you? Is it coming... Uh, who, where is it coming from? So it's... Ba- I mean, it's... Like Ashley said, it's like three characters who are also, like, very close to who they are as people. So Ashley, Quinta, and Sarah. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's basically, like, taking those characters and knowing what they're... Who they kind of are as people mm-hmm. and figuring out, like, where they'd be the most uncomfortable. And okay. so that's where I put them. But, yeah, I mean, a lot of, like... Especially when, like, Quinta, like, you know, goes on a date with her ex. I, like, put a yeah. lot of, like, my own kind of, like, experience with that. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, and also, like, when Ashley's character starts to come out, like, I put a lot of my own experience in that, too. Because uh-huh. mm-hmm. um, that's kind of what you do, but you're putting it through, like, the lens of, of the that character. character. Yeah, the characters were pre-established, but it was so funny because Brittany came in and, like, had her notebook and literally sat each of us down and was like, what are your biggest fears? <laughs> and it was like... <laughs> so intimidating because the the division between our characters and us, I would say, is like 70-30. Okay. So a lot of that is still like, what are my actual biggest fears? And yes. Brittany's just writing down all the things I'm afraid of. And like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, dying alone. And then like immediately I read the script. It's like, I'm afraid of dying alone. I'm like, cool, cool. <laughs> I just got it in there. <laughs> Okay, you said it. You know, you said seventy thirty. That's the split between the real Ashley mm-hmm. Perez and the Ashley Perez that we're getting on BuzzFeed. Mm-hmm. How was that developed? Because mm. you being on camera, that's not where you started at BuzzFeed, and that's not really where you yeah. started in the world of life. Not at all. Obviously. I started from my mom's vagina, and now we here. <laughs> <laughs> started from the bottom. Yeah, from the well, bottom. More of the top. From yeah. the middle. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I was a writer first, and then I moved to LA from New. York and then they moved me to video from there 
Um, or I kind of like found that path. But I think everyone on BuzzFeed to some degree plays a character that's yeah. very close to themselves. I would say when we first started, it was like 90 percent me. And yeah. then the more it kind of grew, the more it felt a need to like differentiate the character just for our own like personal sanity. Of course. Um, and I grew as a person. And that was like the a lot of the impetus for writing You Do You was like my like the biggest story arc that I go through as a character is that my character comes out, but that like echoed my own life in yeah. a lot of ways. And that's kind of why like Brittany and I had so many conversations about like coming out in my own life. And it felt weird that that wasn't part of my character. Like that was the one thing that was separate from my character. So in some ways it brought me closer to who I am. And in some ways it allowed me to, it really did because particularly because Brittany was writing it and we yeah. brought a writer to do it and it felt like the whole process was so much bigger. It felt much more like I was acting than I ever have before. Very cool. Mm-hmm. So, okay. You were talking about all of this kind of happening and it really, you couldn't really have predicted any of this. Mm. Could you? I don't think so, right? Ah, what is BuzzFeed? What's the internet, you know? Uh, it's in, I, mean, I don't know where it is. <laughs> we don't work there. <laughs> Where's the internet? But it really, <laughs> honestly, it's really crazy. I mm. mean, you, you go in and you work in editorial, I mean, and you end up becoming the face of all of these videos and essentially, and a lot of people, you, you say overnight when music artists come in here, right? And you mm. say, you know, oh, it didn't, it did happened overnight, but it really did happen overnight. You know what I yeah. mean? There was months and months and months and months of behind the scenes planning. But with this, one video goes up one day and the next day it has a few million views and it literally is happening overnight. overnight yeah. and, and you need to figure out then you're put in a position, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How much of me lives in these videos and how much of me deserves to be private? Yeah. What is that like for you? What is that transition? What has that been for the both of you? I don't know, Britt, what you want to go first? Um, well, I think for me, I mean, I just personally, I've in in my professional life, I've always been like an out, you know, queer mm-hmm. woman and stuff. And so whenever I was making content, that was always obviously in the background, like I never, you know, played like a straight person or anything. So like mm-hmm. it was always like I was making some kind of like social or, you know, sociopolitical yeah. statement without like having to say it, just being like a queer woman taking up space that was always kind of like something I wanted to do without having to like drive it down someone's throat of like this is my agenda and this is who (laughs) I am like it was kind of just like me existing as myself being queer was enough of a statement for me and so a lot of like where I started in making videos is with my friend Chris Reinecker Mm -hmm. and it was just like me and him just being like little stoner idiots but it was like also (laughs) the fact that I'm a woman and also the fact that I'm gay it was like showing kind of like this side of women that not a lot of people see so like in that it's like making a statement itself and that was like really cool to me to just like be exist as myself but also like you know inspire people to be like oh i can be me too well how needed is that or was that in society because before you guys really came out on the scene and you were doing videos like that nothing else really existed in that realm you know what i mean Mm -hmm. there was no buzzfeed violet there was no you know Mm -hmm. viral videos that you know that were talking about being openly gay or Mm -hmm. that lifestyle i mean yeah it, you kind of really paved your own way and you, you opened up an entire path in terms of the whole online community. Yeah, I mean, and also, like, if you think about back to, like, when we were kids, like, thinking about, like, when I even saw f- my first gay content was probably when I was, like, 18 and I, like, mm-hmm. stumbled upon the L word and I was like, what's this? <laughs> but, like, <laughs> you have to watch it secretly. I exactly, had to watch all I those felt, like, things dirty. secretly of, yeah. like, someone's going to see my Netflix queue. Yeah, because it's <laughs> all Everybody also, knows. like... I'm gay! It's all, like, <laughs> it's all TV. It was all, like, I remember watching Buffy and, like, really, you know, feeling presented like feeling like very represented by Buffy just as a woman but like yeah. the gay part never really like mm. I never still haven't really like felt that represented in like how I feel as a gay woman but um but yeah now I mean it's so crazy now that you know the internet is such a huge thing wherever the internet is but, <laughs> but, that, but that you can just type in like your identity and you can find so much content mm-hmm. for you when like we didn't have that you I, know what I mean yeah I think the biggest part of that too is just BuzzFeed doesn't hire people and BuzzFeed doesn't like there's no big mandate of like hey you know where there's a gap in the market like gay female content we should hire people yeah. for that it's like We hire, like, BuzzFeed tends to hire creators and just lets them make what they want to make. Nobody tells us what to make. And so in so many ways, I feel like that's why it feels more authentic because it's not like we're casting a show and being like, we should have one black girl, one Asian. Could one of them be gay? And then two white people to balance it out. It's just like those are – 
it, it really is a matter of like who you are as a person and yeah. letting that be reflected in the content you make. And I think that's why it feels in so many ways like you're watching your friend's Snapchat yes. stories because it's not they're all real. Yeah, it's not we're not making these things as like a oh, female content is selling really well right now. We should make it. It like we created Violet because it was important to us and to me that like there is a place for like young girls to watch content that represents them, yeah. you know. There's and it's a- different than like other YouTube stars because they're mm-hmm. making like either vlogs or sketches or stuff and your yeah. guys is like all like relatability, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, how weird is it for everybody on the BuzzFeed campus, especially the people in videos to be seen as stars because you all went in there it's crazy. I mean, so well, right? Because you all went in there <laughs> not expecting to be in front of the camera. I don't even yeah. know if when you joined if video was even no, it wasn't. You know, on the mind. It was a joke. It was like video when we started. It was like, well, I guess we're making like slideshows of our lists now. That's really yeah. what it felt like. <laughs> I remember <laughs> those videos. It was like, well, cool, I guess. <laughs> but um, I think... You know, so much of it was the necessity of actors are expensive and half of them are in SAG. And it was like, I guess we'll just be in them. And it was a lot of like, hey, can you be in the shot for a minute? Yeah, literally. And then, hey, can you be in the shot for a minute? Turned into like, hey, do you just want to like be in a video? Mm -hmm. Like, that's I know how it started for me. Yeah, totally. And I think that the bigger thing, too, is like it's just a consequence of what we do but it is weird because we are thrown in the category of like youtuber yeah and and our business model is so different and the way we work like we have nine to six jobs like we go into work yes. and like leave you know we're not we're not youtubers who just like chill all day and, and we <laughs> also like we give like we give notes on like other people's content yeah. we have meetings about we these edit things. all of our stuff we write our stuff we're in it so it's like i think a lot of people perceive buzzfeeders as like we're just sitting like waiting until it's our turn to get in front of the no. camera but it's like we're writing and then we're shooting and then you're running sound and then you're yeah. editing you're like, doing everything yeah. there's no writing of hoverboards being <laughs> here <laughs> <laughs> but, it's, the other ones. but it's weird because you guys also have like thousands upon thousands of twitter followers and you yeah. get stopped in the street every day it's it's I, I had my first panic attack i'm not gonna lie it was like i was at um uc berkeley and it, it it is weird when you get right in your like core audience of like mm-hmm. eighteen to twenty four year old girls, and I I really started to freak out because I felt like I I couldn't be in public, which was weird. I never have really? felt like that before. I was like in the two minutes that I got out of my hotel until I was because it's a college campus. There's just yeah. like people who watch our videos are all on that <laughs> campus. <laughs> That's where the millions of views are exactly. coming from. Exactly, they're in one space, yeah. and so like it. It's dumb because you, at the same time, you're like, this is the coolest thing ever. Getting right. stopped and people being like, I love you. Thank you for making what you make. And, you know, when you get to meet people who actually watch our content and are grateful because they haven't seen females like mm-hmm. them represented and they feel like they can relate to you, that's the coolest feeling in the world. But it is really weird to not intend to be famous in any way and then have it happen yeah. and not be able to, like, hang out or be out. Would you go back and change any of it or no? Nah. Would no. you? I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I mean, I there's a you can't ask me that question because there's a million things I'd change about a million things. Oh, I wouldn't change anything about anything. Would you change well, that I got a staph infection? Th- yes. I would change that too. Like, <laughs> I change my mind. I would change it too. <laughs> change my mind. I don't need to look at that all day. <laughs> You're gonna break up with me. <laughs> no, this is where it ends. Sister got staff. <laughs> Okay, you come, you're a Cuban, Filipino, and you're Korean. Yeah, I'm like a literal mutt human. Yeah, uh, in the I, best way possible. I read your BuzzFeed piece on you going over and teaching English in Korea. Oh, yeah. And it was phenomenal. Oh, thank you. I mean, like an eye opener. Mm. I'm also like that guy who gets stoned on the weekends and watches like Korean documentaries. <laughs> you're like, what? And I'm like, what? This, this is all real, you know? <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, that you, was a weird experience for me. You've lived, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? 26. You've done a lot in 26 years. Yeah, all of it. My parents are really mad because they never know where I'm living or where I'm, what I'm doing. What do they think of all this? Are they proud? Are they happy? Did you get a college degree? Yes, I did. I went to Pepperdine and I thought I was going to be a diplomat. All of my cousins. What? Yeah. Hello. I literally took the test to be in the State Department. I was going to go like work as a... And now I make YouTube videos and my brother works for Cartoon Network and my parents are just like, what did we do? <laughs> <laughs> All of my cousins are doctors and nurses and lawyers and violin, like concert violinists. And Michael's like, I'm going to draw. And I was like, I want to be like fake naked for YouTube videos. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> At least my parents are like, oh, you'll be a diplomat. That's very respectable. They kept telling people I was going to work for the UN. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can see me on your Facebook news feed. Yeah, suck it, mom. No, but my mom is like now 
they just went to New York and they got my mom's been in a couple of videos and they got stopped. Stop. And my mom awesome. sent me a picture and she's okay. like, "Dad and I have fans." <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "We're gonna need security." I was like, "Shut up." <laughs> I asked her if she would be in a video the other day and she's like, "I don't know if it's really like on brand." <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where she learned that. She literally, I was like. Do you have an agent or something? I don't know who I'm supposed to talk to. Like, dad? <laughs> and they probably have, like, their own secret Instagram account. Yeah, oh, my <laughs> God. My mom, the other day, she was like, she sent me a picture of my dad, or of my dog watching, um, or a video of my dog watching TV, as parents do. Yeah, and then she course. was like, full video on dad's Facebook. I was like, is this clickbait? You just sent me, like, a little preview? <laughs> So that's how my parents are dealing with it. They're just getting famous. So you know the ins and outs of like the YouTube world. You obviously know the ins and outs of the BuzzFeed world and really how like the news feed plays. Mm. Do you find yourself binging videos differently? Like do you mm. binge YouTube videos and not think about the science? I mean you just use on brand and clickbait within 60 <laughs> seconds of each other. So there's no, you know, two more industry terms than those two. So yep. obviously that's active in your mind as you're watching things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Britt, do you watch a lot of YouTube? Not really. <laughs> yeah. I I watch really. a sh ton of YouTube. I was just a reporter. When I was writing for BuzzFeed, I was writing about YouTube. I was very okay. obsessed with, like, I still am obsessed with media in general and how things go viral, et cetera. So that's why it's fun to be at BuzzFeed. But I think most of our, like, fans would find it funny to to know how dorky our conversations are because half the time like I'll be talking to Brit or Quinta or something and we'll just be talking about like interesting how it's shared on on Twitter versus on Facebook versus yeah. on and it's like this has more comments this has a higher engagement like we have a lot of fun too but a lot of our minds is very like data driven we get a lot of, of data course. back on everything and so it's readily available yeah, I mean yeah they and they give it to us and it kind of I think the one big thing is it doesn't inform content of like, oh, whoa, well, we have to make something specifically for this. It's more just mm -hmm. interesting to like you have theories and then you test them. Do you find yourself one upping, you know, your videos or no? Yeah, totally. You don't want to be like, yeah, I'm just going to do something slightly less than uh. what I did last time. <laughs> I feel like constantly not pressured by myself to like always make like more and more like better content. Of like course. I think especially with Chris, who I collaborate with a lot, like we constantly are like trying to make like better content yeah. more and more mm -hmm. and more. Otherwise we're like, oh, we're sellouts. <laughs> like if we're doing what we think is as good as the last thing we did, like we're always trying mm -hmm. to like one up yeah. ourselves. Almost. I even think something interesting is like the iteration process at BuzzFeed is so, so it's so organic in a lot of ways where mm. in other places it seems to be more manufactured of like, for instance, Brittany did a video called Lesbian Princess, which is phenomenal <laughs> and I've hilarious. I've seen a series of it's the lesbian so Bride of Frankenstein. I just wrote but, Lesbian Santa. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> but it wasn't a series. That's exactly what happens yeah. at BuzzFeed. It was okay. like, Brittany wrote this thing that was important to her and was really funny and we all thought it was really funny. And people grabbed onto it and it's like, oh... We should make more yeah. and like Britney took it to that and is now doing more lesbian princess and more like seasonal stuff with mm -hmm. it too and like I think that's how stuff naturally evolves at BuzzFeed yeah the Try Guys the same thing happened the four of them just happened to be in a video and it did well and so they made more with Violet it was kind of it was slightly more intentional but it, we didn't know what it was going to be it's organic only mm -hmm. you know and I think that's to me, that's one of the most genius uh, things about BuzzFeed is, yeah, they do great stuff online, but allowing just incredibly talented 20-somethings mm -hmm. to just have a certain amount of resources and the ability to just create mm -hmm. and to throw things up on a wall and see if it sticks was just awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's exactly essentially what happened, right? Yeah. And it's a culture where you don't the, – the, the failure – there's no failure. That's, yeah. Nobody gets in trouble for failing. People get in trouble for not trying. That's it. Like, yeah. we literally have people give us speeches about how, like, I don't care if the video is just, like, mediocre. Like, any video can get 500,000. Like, that's just, like, our middle ground. And yeah. so it's more interesting if the video gets 200,000 views and we figure out why it failed so yeah. hard. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter. There's, like, the median, which doesn't matter. And then everything is about, like, big spikes. And I think that's what You Do You was. You know, it's the first time we ever sold something. Yeah. And it, it did really well. And so... Um, there's a lot of learnings that came from it more than like, oh, now we don't have to make anything. Like we made yeah. money. You know, that's not that's not the learning. Yeah. It's more no. like it's what more can just we like, learn? What can we do better next time? Mm -hmm. What can we test? What's interesting about it? And it's very there's so much back and forth, and we really like welcome notes and that kind of thing. It's awesome. Do you think that like the work that you guys do is? 
this is going to sound dumb, but like important because I feel like you guys have probably the most diverse staff and on camera and off mm. camera of like anywhere. Like you guys have the most diverse, like whether it's like, you know, race, like LGBT, mm-hmm. like everything gets shown mm-hmm. and nowhere else really has that. Well, I think every place can always be more diverse. I think every place <laughs> but, should have that. But yeah, yeah, we definitely have like it's diversity is like very important to the culture um, and kind of. And one thing that's also really important is that we don't always try and cater towards like the super like the super mainstream audience is mm-hmm. like. The thing that um, a lot of the Latino creators did is that they did this sprint essentially where they made a lot of Latino content that was on, like that was primarily for like Latino mm-hmm. audience members who like, you know, who, you know, not Latino people mm-hmm. like white people wouldn't necessarily get it. But yeah. like to Latino people was so important because it was like, yes, we can get that. Mm-hmm. Like it doesn't have to be peppered in with like teaching white people how of to course. understand Latino mm-hmm. culture. Um, and that's like. You know, that's especially what it is with, like, LGBT content, too, is that so much with, like, mainstream media, even with, like, you know, TV and film, is that you have to do something that's, like, palatable for everyone. Whereas, like, with BuzzFeed, especially with how important diversity is, is that I can make something that's about, you know, lesbian culture that I don't have to care about if, like, a straight white guy, like, gets everything. It could just, like, they could just be like, that's funny, but if, like, someone who lives that life and represents that life gets it fully and loves it. There's like, that's no more need to cater to, to everybody. But you're right. Right. Well, you're right, because if you look at a TV network, right, that's why, like, I was Try. even, like, we were watching your show, and I was like, you know, if this is on a network, they would definitely get a network note on this. Or, the, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because, like, yeah. it needs it needs to be needs broad. To everything. Yeah. They, everything yes. needs to be Big Bang Theory, where it's yeah. like, well, will 50 million people watch this? It's like, no. Yeah. no. And so then they kick it out. Yes. Whereas... I think I, you know, it's weird to think of like your work as, or maybe it's not weird. It's not weird to think of your work as important. Hopefully everybody is doing work that in some way they feel is important. Mm -hmm. It's not until you meet the audience that you are making these things for in your mind and they tell you that it makes them feel better. I think all the time about like when I make content, I make it through the lens of, is this going to make a young girl feel better about being herself? And it can be something as minute, you know, the coming out story is obviously a big thing that will make people who are coming out feel better. But I also did a video that was just weird things girls do in a dressing room. And there was a moment (laughs) where I had to actually change and I was in my bra and underwear and it was like, do I want to show this? Like, I don't really like the way my body looks exactly. And like, I can just take it out. And I felt like it was a you know, I had a feeling that like a lot of people feel their way about yes. uh, that way about their bodies too. And so I left it in and I didn't put any self hate in it either. It wasn't like me hating my body. It was just like a fact of life. And that was the number one comment on everything. Like, thank you for showing this. Thank you for being you. And it's crazy that because BuzzFeed lets us be us, it lets our audience feel more okay to be themselves. Yeah. And that feels important. That's but, yeah. amazing. Mm-hmm. Great answer. Cool. So yeah. to answer your question, Jill, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we're extremely important people. <laughs> okay, you do you. Number one on iTunes, dude. I mean, this is congratulations. Thank you. First. Like, it really is great. I'm a huge fan. And it's essentially like, you know, four chicks in their 20s, like mid-20s. Living their best lives. Living life <laughs> and doing them. Mm. Like, straight up. Is that is that a good way to, like, kind of sum it up? Yeah. yeah, that feels good to me. You should change the iTunes description to that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Living life and doing them. Four <laughs> chicks. Yeah. Um, I mean, ble- is there is there any curses with this blessing? Mm. Because it feels like that. I mean, it really is a life changer at the end of the day. Um, I feel like for until I'm dead, there will be always be one Instagram comment that says, where's Andrew? I was part of this like, <laughs> this like shipping. Do you guys thing. know what this means? I do. Astro. Wait. It's so when we created Violet, we started doing these little videos where it's like, what what happens when you have a crush? And the guy who's in it who works with me was named Andrew, and they shipped us as Astrew, and that okay. was my first experience with like internet Tumblr fandom actively cool. wanting us to. But we're coworkers and we're friends, and like it was not real at all. And we like let it carry forward because it was kind of the first thing that people latched onto narratively that we mm-hmm. could arc over all these tinier videos of just like, oh, we just put Andrew in it for a second and it felt like there was still an kind of like when you watch Friends and it'd be like, oh, there's a Ross and Rachel moment in yeah. this one, even cool though it's not line about through them. everything. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so it got really intense and then we had to end it. Like for other people, not for you. Yeah, guys. no, not not for me at all. <laughs> <laughs> not for- that's not. That's a very good clarification. Yeah. It got big, like in the really fandom dramatic. world. <laughs> it really has. Um, and we started to like. Also, Violet was never intended to be like girls and their boyfriends. You know, it's yeah. like. So we kind of felt like, oh, we need to like 
pare it down. And when we killed Astro, it oh my god, the twelve year olds <laughs> revolted so hard. <laughs> and my comments are always, always like the only negative comment on you do you on iTunes. Oh yeah, <laughs> since the last time I checked was. Yeah, cool, cool acting and writing, but like, did you really have to kill off Astro? Yeah, <laughs> so mad. They're like, cool, Ashley's gay, but like, what about Andrew? <laughs> like, legit mad. Why do you think, at the end of the day, all these people relate to you, to the both of you? What what makes mm. you such a great quote unquote BuzzFeed character? I pay um, everyone like twenty dollars to watch our videos. Yeah. That's pretty relatable. I, I think, You'd be broke. Dude. You'd be broke. I think the factor that there isn't some like network network executive and network who, network network. <laughs> there's not a there's lot of no network. network at I don't. Feet. I actually was caps. born without a neck. So. <laughs> That's sad. I think the there's not like a bunch of you know. I hate to keep saying straight white guys, but that's just, you know, where a lot of it mm-hmm. comes down to in terms of like who makes the decisions and a lot of those and a lot of, you know, TV and film and whatnot. And the fact that there isn't someone telling us to like be different or be less gay or yeah. be less Asian. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's the fact it's hard that to like do that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or there's no one telling us to be less of who we are. And we're almost like celebrated, not almost, but we're celebrated for being yeah. mm-hmm. whoever we are, where we get to be the representations that like we didn't have when we were younger and impressionable. I yeah. think that's like totally. I think that's what's really different and i think i don't know i i feel like i'm a good character because i'm an actual human and like we show us being yeah. human like there's so many awkward moments you know the violet tagline when we first started was the good kind of awkward it's like everyone feels weird and awkward and like everyone's cooler than them and it's a farce to pretend that you don't feel that way mm-hmm. yeah. and if you do you're not a human and so instead of putting on a bunch of gloss and like really awesome lighting and making us like have hair and makeup for everything you know like the cool thing about the UDU thing you look at the thing and it's on iTunes but like Sarah and Ella have crazy roots and they yeah. should have gotten their hair done and like, <laughs> they were like why did we do this but it was like because that's how we live our lives yeah. like this was not a thing you know we went over for 10 minutes to go do that photo shoot air quotes <laughs> and then like went back to work and so this was not a matter of like we don't feel a need to manicure ourselves mm-hmm. in a way that makes everyone else feel bad about themselves yeah. it's like I feel bad about myself sometimes, so yeah. like, let's just talk about it. And so yeah. I think in that way, that's what makes us good characters, is that yeah. we're just actual people. Where do you see this going? I mean, where do you take this fame and this notoriety, and how do you grow? How do you grow? I go in- to Barbados. Okay. <laughs> With all the money. Disney. I'm going to Oprah's house. <laughs> um, it's I weird. Learn. What? I learn. <laughs> You learn. Oh, yeah. BuzzFeed, it's weird to work at a company where the mandate from the CEO is to learn. That's it's, pretty it cool. Feels like a, it feels a lot more like a college than it does a giant company in so yeah. many ways. We don't get a lot about the bottom line and we don't get a lot about business. It's like, hey, here's resources and space to make content that's important to you. We'll take care of all the like production details and all the other things that you don't need to know about that's awesome. so that you guys can make the best content that you make. I wouldn't even be able to tell you what like the BuzzFeed mission statement is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the, like, the one thing they tell us is like make content that's like useful for people. Yeah. We make things that are people can actually use, whether it's to like reach out to their friend and be like, hey, this is so us. Or yeah. maybe it's like a recipe video. It's like we should make this together. Or maybe it's an identity video that you couldn't say without somebody yeah. else making it for mm-hmm. you. Um, but in terms of like the future, I don't. No, because <laughs> three years ago I was an English teacher in South Korea, <laughs> and and so who who knows? Hope in three years I'm gonna be an English teacher in South, South Korea. Korea. <laughs> <laughs> I, you I, did. You vowed not to go back. You yeah. said you could you could sign up for another year. Yeah, it's funny though because um, my students, the teacher who took over at my school, or two years later, a teacher took over, and my students after mm-hmm. the YouTube video started getting popular, they were like. It got posted on Huffington Post Korea or something, and they were like, "That's Ashley teacher." And the students were like, "You don't know her." Or the teacher who's like from America was like, "How do you know her? You don't know her. She works for a really big site." And they're like, "That was our teacher." That's cool. And they sent me an email, and that was crazy to see. Like, I I can now make content that goes back to my students yeah. in Korea. Everything wow. gets connected. Yeah. 
Sweet. Life, man. I mean, do you take, do you write a TV show for network? Do you take your personality to, a, I mean, that's mm-hmm. the thing, right? Isn't that going to be an eventual crossroads that one will be at? Well, we're going to make crossroads two. Yeah. With Sean <laughs> Rhymes. <laughs> Britney Spears is really into it. I just Genius did. Genius content. I love it. <laughs> I'm doing cover songs of the song Crossroads by Bone Thugs and Harmony. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it. It's just a story where we're standing at, at Crossroads yeah. and just looking, being like, where do we go? That's yeah. it. And then we're going to go eat at Crossroads. Mm-hmm. So you're going to be a hip-hop artist and you're going to be Britney Spears. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, because I am Britney Spears. That's pretty dope. <laughs> Rips <laughs> off my mask. Hi, y'all. You do you. On <gasps> iTunes. Killing it, dude. Quinta, Sarah, Ashley, Ella, the friends. Mm-hmm. I really enjoy this series. It makes me mm-hmm. happy. Aw. It does. It makes me happy that you're just like a white dude who likes it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're not our, this is exactly what we're talking about. You are not our target audience, but the fact that you're like, yeah, that was cool. That's cool to me. Like, I mean, it's, that's special, right? Mm-hmm. When you, I mean, you go out and you try you create content for one group and then you understand that like, there's so many different similarities and mm-hmm. just being people is universal and it's mm-hmm. relatable and, yep. you know, it's exactly what we do here on the radio every night, you know, mm-hmm. and we do it. And we obviously we do it differently. We're on traditional medium and we're on in like Tradition. middle America in like where there's like <laughs> Arkansas and Alabama and heard the, of them. Yes. What up? <laughs> yeah. They're different there. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know, it's, it's the same thing. It really mm-hmm. is cool. I, I dig it a lot, man. You do you. you. Number one on iTunes. Congratulations. Uh, how much of you do you is scripted and, and how much is improv? Do you improv? Do you keep going with it? We improv. There's like probably... I could count like five or six lines that are in there that are improv, but like Brittany's really funny and wrote a really tight script that Dope. felt authentic to us. So it didn't feel like we need to improv. We needed to improv that much, but there definitely is some improv in there. And I feel like it's so in your voice, like each character's voice. It just mm-hmm. feels so natural and you obviously know them and you do you watch it. And, you know, if you watch it, if you're a white dude. Like, you should try it out because it's really great. <laughs> I'm recommending it to all of you. What is and this then you for? can see if it this does camera. you. But that camera's on you. <laughs> yeah, right. it does. Watch that, it. That's good. Brittany Ashley, Ashley Perez, you do you. Check it out, please. Jill, get your, get your face checked out. Bye, guys. <laughs> Bye.